hello out there happy new year to you i hope you've been doing well today i'm making the video on how to approach examination questions as a, a higher education student you know as um a student studying for a degree you know a diploma whatever as a higher education student i did promise my students i was going to make this video because i have been teaching in the field of higher education for about a decade now and I've noticed that one of the problems we face with our students is that they either do not understand the questions, they do not seem to understand the questions, or they do not understand how to approach the questions. Or uh, Because of this, there's usually a lot of failure that shouldn't be. So I thought to make this video to help both my students and other higher education students out there. Now I'm going to start this video by telling you a story. Now, back in my undergraduate days, my second year in the university specifically, I had taken a course in botany. You know, my first degree is in biology education, BSc, biology education. You know, so I had taken a course in botany, and my mother used to be a botanist, and I had inherited her textbooks, and I really used to study hard. So when the grades for this particular examination came out, and I had a B, you know, since it's something, I can't remember exactly what it was, and I noticed that one of my colleagues who uh, was a direct entry student, he had done an NCE in education and had just joined us in the second year, he had an A in the course. I approached one of my lecturers, you know, one of my um, favorite lecturers, Prof. Owolabi, then Dr. Owolabi, who had taught me that course. I went to his office and I told him, I greeted him, and I told him the results were out and I didn't understand why I had scored, you know, why I had had a B. And I don't know what my colleague did better or my classmates did better than me. And he got an A. And, you know, he didn't seem surprised or anything. He said, okay, come on, I'm going to tell you. So he told me, you see, you are a very intelligent student, but you are still answering examination questions as though you were a secondary school student. In his words, he said, when you are a student in the university, you are expected to have universal knowledge of every topic under the universe. You are expected to have universal knowledge. So you should have some knowledge about every topic under the universe. You should know something about it. And when you approach examination questions and you are asked a question, exhaust your knowledge on that question, he said to me. He said, do not restrict yourself specifically to the question. He said, exhaust your knowledge. Write about everything you know about the question. Give examples. If there are drawings that can illustrate your points better, draw. If there are types to be named, name all of those, you know. He said that to me. I'm like, okay, is that the problem? He said, yes. Your questions were, your answers were really restricted, were, were very narrow. So you didn't end all the points. And I said, thank you, sir, to him. And I can say with every amount of boldness that after that encounter with Prof. Wolabi, I went out and I've schooled, you know, I, my, that was my first degree. I did my master's degree, I did my PhD, and I've gone on to do uh, tens of 50, about 50 courses or over in universities around the world, and I've actually stood out in those universities. My first, second, third degree, I was best graduating student, just because of what Prof. Wolabi told me, you know. So I took my time from then on to study beyond uh, the outline and the guide given by the lecturer, to put in a lot of efforts and... Uh, I've been doing really well. So I want to guide you. Uh, I have another video on study habits or study skills that will be useful to you. You can check that out on how you can enhance your study time and understand better and all this. But this video is restricted to how to answer examination questions. Now, so when you're given a question or your exam paper, you know, the first thing you do is to read the instructions. Now, the instructions are going to tell you how many questions, questions you're going to answer. Maybe answer three questions out of five questions and probably will tell you question one is compulsory if it says to you question one is compulsory you know that there's something about that question and usually those compulsory questions actually uh, carry more marks so if you didn't read the instructions very well you're likely to just answer three random questions and miss out on the compulsory questions and that would mean that you can never get you know the required max you can never get 100 percent you've missed out on something so the most important thing when you receive your question paper in an examination is to read the instructions 
Now, after having read the instructions, the next thing you want to do is find out how many questions you want to answer and how much time has been allocated for each question. I just talked about giving as much information as you possess on the particular question. Now, if you're not careful, you could spend all the time that you have responding to just one question, and with that, you're not going to pass as well. So after having read the instructions, the next thing you want to do is to allocate time to each question. So if I've been asked to answer three questions, you know, maybe one composite question, and I've got uh, one hour, for instance, you know, one hour system is three questions. If there is a composite question and it's more weighty than other questions, I'll probably allocate um, uh, maybe 30 minutes to that question and then 15, 15 minutes to the next two questions. So you're guided and you don't spend more time than necessary on one question. If it's three questions and no question is compulsory, it means I've got 20 minutes per question. And so I'm going to take my time and make sure that whatever information I'm providing, whatever drawing, whatever types, whatever illustrations, all will fall within the 20 minutes for that question. Now that's the first thing you want to do. Now like I said, usually your lecturers, your examiners, have a marking scheme. So if they've told you, um, elaborately discuss this or explain this, they might not have told you that there's going to be marks for types, there's going to be marks for examples, there's going to be marks for those who draw, especially if your um, course work had involved drawing on that question. They may not tell you you have marks allocated for all of that. They'll just tell you elaborately discuss this. Or explain this in details and so if you just go you know explaining um, randomly without any examples no drawings no illustrations no types you're gonna miss out if when we set the questions we've allocated marks for drawings if you do not draw you don't get those marks and remember to do whatever you want to do within the time that you have if there's types that have been giving you examples and all of that we might allocate marks for that and if you do not give us that you would never get the full marks so make sure you have armies with enough information and make sure you give out enough information as much information as time allows you to give now the trend i've noticed among the students of this generation is that they come to examination halls prepared to give just the barest minimum that's required of them i mean not even when we're in primary schools did we answer essay questions with single sentences? What I've noticed in the university is that you have more than 50% of the class. If you say define whatever, they give you just a single a one sentence definition that does not even cover all the properties of what they are supposed to define. So if you're asked to define something at the university level, first of all, you start by giving us one or two expert definitions. You know, you have professionals in the fields, uh, experts in the fields, you know, we have authorities in the fields, and they say, define, for instance, um, reinforcement. What you want to first of all do if you want to get maximum marks is to give us one or two definitions by one or two professionals. According to Skinner, the reinforcement is this, this, and that. And then according to this other person, one or two definitions from authorities in the field. After that, you are expected to give us your own definition of the concept. What do you understand from the different definitions you read? You know, you read the definition by Gross, you read the definition by um, MacLeod, you know, you read it. And after all of this, you have your own conception of what reinforcement is, for instance. So after telling us what MacLeod says, and you tell us what Gross says, you now tell us this is reinforcement by my own understanding. I don't know if you get me. That's how you define the concept. Not just the one sentence hanging somewhere and they are off. So take your time. Read several definitions. Try to master. You don't have to cram verbatim. But get the idea of where this authority is coming from. Usually when you it's about psychological constructs, you usually have different definitions coming from different angles, you know, of the subject matter. So you pick up one or two definitions that comes from different angles, define them in your own words, and then you give your own definition. What do you think? Sometimes you may not agree with the definition of the authorities, and it is allowed. But if you do not agree with their definition, you tell us why you do not agree with their definition. Okay, so you define the concept like that. Like I said, leave some room for examples or types and then, you know, drawings, if they are drawings. Sometimes you may define wrongly. But by the time you begin to give examples, 
the lecturer gets to understand that, oh, you grasped this concept. There was just an error in your definition. So if you did not score marks for defining, you will score some marks for the examples you give. I don't know if you understand that. So that's some way to ensure that you get all the marks allocated to a question. Now, another thing I've seen, another error I've seen students um, uh, make is when you tell students with the aid of a diagram, explain this. I'm sorry, but even when we're in secondary school, we're made to understand the diagram is an aid. So if I say to you in an examination, with the aid of a diagram, explain uh, the different stages of memory or the multi-mode, you know, whatever. So when you begin with the diagram, it's just an aid. So you make, you draw the diagram, you label the diagram, you explain the diagram, that's just an aid. You really need to still elaborately explain the concept with the aid of a diagram. Maybe with the aid of a diagram, explain Maslow's hierarchy of needs theory. So the diagram is just an aid. After you've drawn the diagram and explained the diagram, you need to explain the theory. Because I said, with the aid of the diagram, explain the theory. So after you have drawn the diagram and labeled it and tried to explain the diagram, you now use the diagram to explain the theory. I don't know if we get that. So, But what I see students do is that they just draw the diagram and they leave it there. If that question was to be 20 marks and you just drew the diagram, probably will get 5 marks. If you get as much as that, and that's not enough. So remember, if they say with the aid of the diagram, the diagram is just an aid. Okay, if I say uh, using any theory, explain motivation. What you need to do is, first of all, you begin to explain the theory you're using. And then use the theory to explain, you know, the uh, subject matter. So we need to learn how to, you know, approach questions. We need to really learn how to approach questions so that we can get maximum marks for every question that we answer. And like I said, be ready to put in the effort to study. Be ready to put in the effort in the examination hall. Back then the university, I can't remember a single um, exam I took without needing extra sheets. Because you had read so much, you had enough information to give out. Usually the sheet they gave you for the exam was not enough for you to write. So you, took, you finished that sheet and then you went for two or three extra sheets. And then the sheets we had back in the days were more than what you have now. What I see our students do when we give them like six leaves, they can't even use two for an examination, university students. So they just give you single sentences, single sentences, first page, second page, and they run off. How do you expect to pass? You must put in the effort. You must put in the time in studying. Like I said, check out my video on study habits to see how you can study and prepare for examinations to ensure that when you get to the examination hall, there's no surprises. I mean, you'll be waiting, looking for more questions to respond to. Check that out. Another point I'd like to make is that you shouldn't be in a hurry to submit your exam uh, paper, your answer booklet. I mean, usually when you're given sufficient time in the university, take your time to answer your questions. In fact, you need to exhaust your time, except you have a reason why you need to be out of the examination hall. In a hurry, there's no competition. The person who leaves the examination hall first is not necessarily the person who's going to score the highest or who is the most intelligent. So there's no competition about it. Take your time to answer your questions. And ha after having gone through the entire questions, you've answered all the questions you're required to answer, please go back again. Go back again and review your answers. There might be something to add, there might be some mistakes to correct. And then when you're answering examination questions, if you get to questions that you do not know, start with the questions that you know very well, that you have all the answers to. Start with the questions that you know are easier to answer. Exhaust those ones. If you, if you come across questions that you don't know the answers, leave them, go answer the ones you know, and then come back to them later. Leave them, go answer the ones you know, and then come back to them later. Now, by the time you're done with everything and come back, you might have remembered, you know, what those questions are about, or you can just attempt them, you know. So you don't need to dwell on one question because, oh, I don't know number one, and you remember. If you don't know number one, skip number one, go to number two. You know, exhaust number two, three, maybe four, and then later you can come back to number one, particularly when you have um, objective questions. Yeah, so you can always skip and come back. You know, don't be in a hurry to submit. Make sure you review and everything is fine and then submit your paper. And then as your exams are approaching, I wish you the very best in your exams. I wish you the very best. And I wish that you excel and earn good grades. And I wish you the best for your life as a matter of fact. See you.